as we divide an idea into particulars to get a more complete understanding, we also need to consider its attributes, properties, and relations in order to gain a comprehensive conception of it. For example, if the subject be historical or a matter of fact, we can inquire whether the action was done at all, whether it was done in a certain way, or by such persons as reported, at what time it was done, in what place, by what motive, and for what design. What is the evidence of the fact? Who are the witnesses? What is their character and credibility? What signs are there of such a fact? What concurrent testimonies, which may either support the truth of it, or render it doubtful. Ontology investigates and explains the nature and essence of all beings, their qualities and attributes. We should make proper inquiry into the many particulars which go toward the complete and comprehensive idea of any being. Those who do not make proper inquiry into the particulars often betray their own ignorance and they resort to wit and banter as a refuge and excuse for their own laziness. In ontology, we examine a great variety of modes, circumstances, and relations of every subject to choose what are those circumstances, relations, and properties of any subject which are most necessary to explain, illustrate, or to prove the point. Abstraction is where we come to a comprehensive conception of a thing by its several properties and relations. In order to communicate knowledge to others, in a clear and unobstructed or confounded manner, we must range our ideas in a just order to help the hearer in their abstraction and in their conception. Some rules to help gain an orderly conception of things are, number one, focus on recognizing the essentials of a subject before the accidentals. Two, survey and review the general parts and properties of any subject before you extend your thoughts to review the particular kinds of species in it. 3. Study and contemplate things first in their own simple natures, and afterwards view them in composition with other things, unless your purpose is to take a compound being to piece to find and show the nature of it by searching and discovering of what it is composed. 4. Consider the absolute modes or affections of any being as it is in itself, before you proceed to consider it relatively, or to survey the various relations in which it stands to other beings, etc. To see an example of these rules, let us gain a clear and distinct idea of the word passion. Step 1. We would define the name and the thing, and in doing so we would recognize we are not looking into passion as only meaning anger or fury or as a sustaining energy. We would be looking into the various affections of the mind, such as admiration, love, or hatred. We would define it as passion is defined as the feeling of the mind or the sensible effect of impression. We would also list the essential difference between passion and hunger, pain, etc., and that passion is a thought or perception of the mind. In doing so, we have defined the name and thing that we are studying. So step two, we would conceive of it completely, or into several parts that compose it. We would recognize the mind's perception of some object that results in the excitement or result on the nerves, blood, and flesh. And it is the sensation of this inward commotion. Step three, where we consider it comprehensively in its various properties, we find that it belongs to all mankind in varying degrees. But it's not constantly present with us, but only on certain occasions. And it was appointed by our Creator for various useful ends and purposes, for vigor in doing what is right. Step four would be where we recognize the various kinds of it. And we would come to understand that if the object appears agreeable, it raises love. If it is likely to obtain, it excites hope. If unattainable, despair. If lost, it causes sorrow, etc. And step five is where all of these things must be placed in a proper order for it to be explained. When our minds consider God, we must consider each of his attributes 
individually, things that are akin to them, and what are the opposites and contraries of them. These further our understanding of those attributes, which furthers our understanding of God. 